are you? I'm well. I'm well. Um, I'm sitting back there like sweating and churning because all these memories are coming up and it's just like, wow, <laughs> that's a lot up in there. Right. I'm actually nervous too because it's like telling the world, especially the people who know you. And isn't it ironic that after all these years, there's a stigma underneath that. Absolutely. What is the stigma? Shame. Mm -hmm. Some sort of shame. How long have you been diagnosed? Uh, I've been living with HIV for nine months. Last fall, I started getting sick and I never got better up until a friend of mine pointed out that I was sick all the time. I moved out on the 1st of December of last year and then I got my results uh, four days after. So it was a lot as soon as I saw that it was reactive. My entire body almost shut down. I could not say a word. For me, I had slept with about, I think, seven people at that time. I was 23, I think it was. At the time, nobody knew what caused it. It was bathhouses and poppers, and I had never gotten near either of those. That's what they said they thought it was. My roommate said, I want to go get tested for that disease. And I'm like, well, you don't do drugs. We went to support him, and we all got tested together, and we all got tested positive together. And Tony's dead, and Jim is still alive. I felt so alone, even next to somebody. Absolutely. Completely alone. Researchers know of 413 people who have contracted the condition in the past year. One third have died, and none have been cured. Death didn't scare me. It was uh, living with this for a long time. That's more frightening than, uh, than death. Today, researchers here at the National Centers for Disease Control said they had found several cases where people who had been sex partners both had the condition. The scientists say this probably means they are dealing with some new, deadly, sexually transmitted disease. It's fascinating to hear your story because the reactions are almost the same. What was your knowledge of all of it. I knew that science has definitely improved and it's become very advanced. I feared, um, not necessarily for my life, but for getting in trouble with my family. Um, but I also knew that I stood a chance. Mm -hmm. I was told um, more than once by specialists saying that you are more than likely to die from a car accident than with what you have. If I'm dying from anything, I'm dying from the fact that not enough rich, white, heterosexual men have gotten AIDS for anybody to give it. All the newspapers I read tell me that IV drug users and homosexuals still account for the overwhelming majority of cases and those at risk. AIDS is a test of who we are as a people. So we would make quilts for anybody who died. It filled the entire mall. When Hillary and Bill showed up, they were the first politicians to ever show up and acknowledge it. And she was as far away from me as that wall is. And just, they were there, no fanfare. They came to respect it, and I was sobbing. And I just said, thank you. It's like somebody acknowledged us for the first time. She showed up, nobody else did. It was just because we were gay, and it's just so stupid. And when something like that happens, you realize my spirit is contingent upon the belief in another person in me. How are they about it? Have you told them? I have told them last week. How was that? I said, before anything, I want you to know I am being taken care of. I am taking care of myself. I will be okay. I told them that I was HIV positive. My mother broke down in tears. My father was clearly affected as well, but it seemed to me as if he was in denial at that moment. Yeah, when I told my mom, I said, okay, so it's just so you know, I've had this for 10 years, and unfortunately I've reached the place where I have to go on medication, and it's an experiment, and they don't know what's gonna happen to me. I could die from the medication, and I figured I should tell you now at this point instead of something just happening and you finding out. How many pills are you taking? Luckily, just one. Oh my God, that's so awesome. There was a point when I was taking 18. Oh my God. Three times a day. Part of the process to get where we are today is we would just volunteer. 
Everyone donated their bodies to science. I did a vaccination study one time where I got an injection at 6.30 in the morning. They drew my blood every 15 minutes for the next three hours, then every half hour, all the way for 12 hours. And I had all of it on my arms. They were gonna go to my legs next. And you just did it, because you had to. You had to and you wanted to. What are you most afraid of? To get rejected by, per se, your own blood, to be thought of differently, that there is a possibility that in their minds you are just an HIV positive person. What were you most afraid of? It sounds odd. I was most afraid that I was never gonna be able to ride horses again. If you ever run across a person who's a long-term survivor and they look dead or tired or depressed or they're bitter, just know they're a little bit tired. We have it good. Having your friends and families die, it's dark compared to the now. Well, I tell you, if you ever decide to reach out and continue to foster friendships with people who are from my generation, they'd probably thrive on it. Hey guys, we're Caroline! Did you know it's Hispanic Heritage Month? No me diga! For more Latino content, subscribe here!